in this class, let us see the bandwidth of frequency modulated signals. Theoretically, the bandwidth of uh, frequency modulated signals is infinity. So theoretically, we can say the bandwidth is infinite. But in practice, uh, the limit of the special function that is J and beta limit of that uh, Bessel function as n tends to infinity is zero. So the Bessel function of infinite order tends to zero. So we can have a finite value of uh, bandwidth. So for defining bandwidth, we have to define the power ratio. Let us see what is mean by power ratio. If n sidebands are considered on either side of uh, that carrier frequency Fc, so uh, take the ratio of that uh, 2n plus 1 components. If n uh, components are uh, selected on either side of the carrier frequency, then we can have uh, 2n plus 1 uh, components. Uh, 2n plus 1 components you will have. So you have to take that ratio of uh, power of 2n plus 1 components to the total power, which will give you the power ratio. So power ratio Sn can be written as uh, that of power of that uh, uh, 2n plus 1 components is half into Ac square, erase is the carrier amplitude, sigma k is equal to minus n to n j k squared of beta the whole by half k c square. This is the total power of k c square. That is S n is equal to sigma k is equal to minus n to n j k of beta squared. See here the value of k is from minus n to plus n. Here I can uh, write uh, the k is equal to zero term separately so that uh, that power ratio is n is equal to a zero beta squared. Uh, plus 2 into sigma k is equal to 1 to n, that uh, minus 1 to minus n to plus 1 interval is changed to k is equal to 1 to n. So jk squared of beta, let it be equation number one. This is the power ratio. For a signal to have a given bandwidth, it should have most of its energy in that band. Okay, so for a given modulation index beta, see, uh, we have to find the smallest value of n. So uh, our next uh, aim is to find the value of a small n, how many components you have to select. The value of n that gives that power ratio greater than or equal to 0.98 or 98 percentage then that power ratio should be 98, which means that almost all the power of, or all the energy is contained in that band. So if that condition is to be satisfied, ESN should be 0.98 or, or greater. So let us write that condition as that power ratio should be greater than or equal to 0.98. So uh, we are fixing the value of ESN or power ratio to 0.98. So we have to find uh, for what value of n the uh, above ratio tends to 0.98. Uh, we, have, we have already seen the table of Bessel functions. From the table of Bessel functions, we, uh, uh, it is very interesting to note that for the power ratio to be greater than or equal to 0.98, the value of n depends on the modulation index beta. And uh, that value of n should be equal to beta plus 1 just one more than that of the um, modulation index. 
So this value of n will lead to the power ratio to be 0.98 or greater. So what will be the bandwidth? So bandwidth will be 2 into n into fn. So that n can be replaced as bt is equal to 2 into beta plus 1 into f. This is equation number 2. See, this is the expression for bandwidth. Uh, but most important thing is that this is a special case where the modulating signal is a sine wave. Thereby, expression is valid only for this special case, that is, only for sine wave. So, beta is defined only for that tone modulation here. Now, let us see what is the physical meaning of that beta into f. That is, uh, we have to focus our attention to beta f. What is beta f? While discussing the spectrum, we have seen that a modulated, uh, modulated signal x of t is equal to a cos omega c t plus uh, beta into sine omega m t. See, if I differentiate this argument, I will get that instantaneous frequency. Okay, so that is the phase. If I differentiate that phase, you will get that instantaneous frequency. On differentiating, we will be getting omega c plus uh, beta into sine omega m t when differentiated, you will get omega, sorry, omega m cos omega m into t. And that maximum value of cos omega m t is 1. So that uh, beta into omega m, it represents the maximum frequency deviation of the H signal. So that beta omega m or beta f m represents the peak frequency deviation, peak frequency deviation. that the signal will exhibit. So let us write the expression for bandwidth as Bt is equal to 2 into beta into fm plus fm. I'm multiplying that fm inside the bracket and Bt is equal to 2 into that beta fm is uh, replaced by f delta plus fm. That will be equation number 3. Get that uh, f delta is equal to beta fm, the peak value of frequency deviation. Now, this is the bandwidth expression for bandwidth. And uh, most important thing is that this band expression for bandwidth is valid only for uh, sinusoidal message signals. So, it is a special case. Now, we have to uh, generalize this expression. That is, for a general message signal or an arbitrary message signal whose bandwidth is Efx, we can define uh, that deviation ratio, capital D, deviation ratio, T as uh, peak frequency deviation, peak frequency deviation, to the bandwidth of general modulating signal. General modulating signal. So this deviation ratio, capital D, is analogous to that modulation index beta for sinusoidal modulated signal. So the deviation ratio uh, plays the same role as that a modulation index beta, which is in the case of uh, sinusoidal modulating signal. So capital D can also be represented as F delta divided by Fx. Now, the equation for bandwidth in this uh, equation number two can be modified as uh, Bt is equal to 2 into capital D plus 1 into Fx, which would be equation number 4. Or Bt can be written as 2 into D into Fx plus Fx, 
this d into fx is replaced by f delta, which is a peak frequency deviation. So, 2 into f delta plus fx, where f delta is equal to uh, d into fx, maximum frequency deviation. That is the equation number 5. So, this equation number 5 represents the bandwidth of a general message signal. And this expression 5 is known as the Carson's rule. That is important, Carson's rule, which shows that uh, the bandwidth, the FM bandwidth, is twice the sum of frequency deviation, that is, uh, twice the sum of frequency deviation and the bandwidth. Two times the sum of frequency deviation and the bandwidth. So based on the value of capital D, uh, in the case of uh, general message signal or beta in the case of sinusoidal signals, these FM signals are classified into two categories. The first one, uh, if capital D or beta is very much less than one, the equation number four becomes Bt is approximately equal to 2fx. So when in this equation, if beta is very much less than one or d is very much less than one, that d is neglected so that you will get the bandwidth as 2fx. Now the fm signal is called narrow band fm, narrow band fm. or N B F signal. Now, the bandwidth of this uh, narrow band F signal is equal to two into Fx, which is the same as the bandwidth of the double sideband signal as seen in the case of amplitude uh, modulation. So uh, this narrow band uh, F signal, in the case of narrow band F signal, the bandwidth is similar to that of uh, the amplitude, case of the amplitude modulation. Now, if D or beta is very much greater than one, then that uh, FM signal is called the wide band FM, wide band FM or uh, WBFM. So uh, the expression four becomes Bandwidth is equal to 2 into d plus 1 into fx. When d is very much greater than 1, that 1 can be neglected. So bandwidth is approximately equal to 2d into fx. Or the d into fx is peak frequency deviation. So bandwidth is approximately equal to 2 into f delta. So these are the cases of narrow band FM signal and wide band FM signal. The next class, uh, we will discuss the generation of FM signals. Thank you.